Okay. Okay. Well, let me let me let me give you a quick heads up of how, how, how I got here. I mean, that's I'm I'm originally from Northern Ireland, Ireland the Nord, for the French. Um, so I was born born and brought up in Northern Ireland, in in the in the backwoods, and it was sport. I used to play for Ireland. I was a badminton player, and that got me got me out of Ireland into England, where where I played professionally for a number of years in the in the late seventies. And then I realized I was going to starve if I was uh, going to stay a badminton player. And that led me into the early days of technology uh, in the city of London in the UK. So my, my early days were in sales. So naturally, the, 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 the quickest way to get to the sale uh, is, is through the network. It, it's still, even then, uh, I'm talking about 79, 80 81, 82, as the, the telecoms market and the, the data communications market, even before the PC, uh, you know, selling technology, it's, it's all about, everything's about access. Everything's about access to market. So it's a question of how, how do you do that? And obviously when you're young, you know, in your early 20s, you don't have a network is, is, is the answer. And so the, the, the first lesson really is, you know, build a network before you need it. That's 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 the watchword, you know. It's it's too late once you need it, and you're going out. Oh, you're scrambling. Need to do this. Need to do this. You know, contacting people cold. Um, you know, for forcing the introduction cold. It's too late. So the thing I learned is that you you build out and at all layers. So it could be, you know, school networks. It can be university networks. It can be uh, as, as we were saying, the, the diaspora, the, the Irish network in my case, the Russian network in your case, uh, the tech networks. Even then, there were more formal networks, uh, clubs in a sense, in those days that you had to be invited to join. So it's a question of how do, how do you how do you get yourself in a position where you get invited to the dinners or you get invited to the events uh, at that point. So, you know, as, in, as I say, in the early days, uh, it was a question of working your way towards that. But everything is about, you know, and sales is, is, is about this and everything's about sales, really. There's no point in de developing a product or a service or SaaS or whatever it happens to be, whatever world you're in, uh, unless at the end of the day, somebody, somebody pays you money for it and, and you get a deal. So, in those days, it's about how you, relationships with people. Everything's about relationship with people. So it's about your empathy, your sensitivity, your nature, giving nature, personality, how people engage with you, how they, they remember you uh, is, is, is the important thing. And that hasn't, that hasn't changed over 30 years for me. You know, it's it's about it's a two way street. It's a it's a give and a take situation. Plenty of takers out there, waste of time. We don't deal with them. People discard takers. It's about giving. It's the pay it forward thing that's become so famous now in terms of you know if you give, spread spread the uh, spread the word, get it out there. People, people will, will, will give back and will, will, in, will engage with you. And, you know, when you engage with people for the first time, and I learned this very on, it, it is about building that relationship. It's not, about, it's not about closing for the deal. You know, they always used to say ABC, the old Xerox style of, uh, of closing, the spin techniques, the closing techniques, you know, the... The films, Glen Gary, Glen Ross, always be closing the hard sale. Um, yeah. You know, the, I mean, the, the answer is it is about business in the background. But at the, at the beginning of the thing is it's, it's this bond with people. And it, it's, it's different when, when you're dealing with, in the UK, relatively easy. You know, you understand the English temperament, understand the culture. They're a bit closed. They're a bit polite. Uh, there's fences. There's hedges. You know. There's there's barriers to, to getting to the know them. But 
if you can get through those barriers, there's a set of rules that are pretty easy to, to deal with. But when you're dealing with cultural differences, you know, I used to deal with the Japanese uh, a lot uh, with the big vendors in, uh, in Tokyo in, in the 80s. Uh, those rules go out the window. You know, it's a different, it's a different thing. There isn't an emotional bond. You know, the Irish thing of, you know, hugs and kisses, uh, personality, uh, drinking with people, you know, the, the whole, you know, emotional thing, not, they've no interest to them, no interest in them. They would rather uh, talk to their competitors and bond with them and often did, quite frankly, they would discuss us with their competitors rather than actually being on our side of the table uh, and, and co-joining in that sense. So the, the build-up over the years um, from that point of, of learning how to sell, learning how to bond with people, this was a, na- a natural thing that you had to do. And to be honest, maybe very successful in the 80s uh, doing that because I understood that and I did my research. That's the other thing that's important. Uh, people come onto these calls. Uh, you know, we, we look at Lunch Club at the moment. People land on these calls with me they don't know who they're talking to. They don't know any background. Uh, I always talk about touch points. You know, if I, if I can engage with you, you come to me cold on Lunch Club and I can say to you, oh, I see you're, you know, you're connected to, uh, to Jimmy. I used to know Jimmy from, you know, way back. Da, 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 da. Isn't Jimmy a great guy? Suddenly there's a comfort in that conversation that there's some, this common ground, there's some, there's some interest there. You come in cold and you go, you start going, oh, what do you do? What I, what, what, what's your background? What, 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 you know, you spend the first 20 minutes of a 40 minute call trying to work out who and who and what these people are. So, you know, as, as you do with sales, it's important to know who's in the room, who you're engaging with. And as you say, you've got, you've got a little, few little tricks in your, in your, in your back pocket in terms of, you know, resonating with these people so they go oh this guy's this guy's smart you know if you're young you know and i'm older and you're engaging with me and i go oh, this kid's made, made an effort made an effort to get to know who i am what i am what i'm interested in these things these things are important and they're always important that that, that never change and that will you know to be honest that puts you ahead of 80 percent of the market because 80 percent of the market doesn't do the research and and doesn't and doesn't do anything so you build it. You build those skills, and you you know it's it's self fulfilling. The more you do it, the more success you get. More people come to you, and so on. And then you, as I say, you get into all the formal networks. You know, I've been to Harvard. I've been to Berkeley. Been to MIT. You know, thirty years ago, there's there's a there's a formal academic network. The only reason I did the master's degree was to, was the network. I didn't give shit about the the master's degree not interested. It was about traveling with a multicultural crowd with those classes from UK to America. Uh, we were in Prague and Budapest in Paris as, a, as a, an international, as a master's degree in international business. It was about mixing with those people and then obviously getting, getting involved at high levels of networks and, and very interesting personalities, very interesting people who've got a, a global perspective on what's actually going on. So there's, there's, all, there's all layers. I mean, you, you know, with the finance stuff, you've got your angels, you've got your VCs, you've got your family offices. Family offices particularly difficult to get to, very closed, high-end, ultra-high ultra, ultra high net worth. How, how, do you, how do you break down barriers? And how you treat those layers uh, are also different in terms of engagement. Some of it's with VCs, slightly more informal, Angels, less formal, family offices, again, sort of informal, but very, very difficult to bridge. And again, you know, trying to find comfort factors uh, and introductions and so on. Uh, very, very important in terms of um, trust with these people. They don't trust anybody uh, that they haven't been introduced to, or there's some pedigree or there's some credibility and so on. So over the years, um, you know, I was building companies. So, you know, built whatever it was, four or five companies, 
uh, the, the, the trials and tribulations of, of startups and everything when, you, when you've got no money, you know, even if you've had some investment, you know, you're always, you're always running on a, on a shoestring uh, marketing budget. The question is, how are you, how are you going to access the market? You know, you fly, you fly in uh, to the States in, in the Silicon Valley, you know, for the first time, let's say, with a new company. Well, how, how, how are you going to access the market? Now, in, in the day, again, there were formal uh, networks. There's, you know, the sport, you know, the tennis clubs, the golf clubs. Palo Alto Golf Club, I remember, big big money set up. How do you get in there? Uh, the Churchill Club in the day, uh, you know, all all the all power players uh, were were in the Churchill Club. How do you get invited? So how do you work your way towards that? But again, it's a, it, the thread is, you know, getting somebody to introduce you. Now it's obviously Michael Birch in the Battery Club. You probably heard about. Yeah, Michael, obviously, you know, well, obviously. Been a Brit uh, with with Bebo, you know. Again, it not now it's easier for us obviously because we're known, so we get invited and so on. But in the day when you're you're, you're nobody, you know, uh, we're not you know we're we're the pro as they say in Mash, we're, we're the pros from Dover now. Uh, but then we weren't, you know, no name, nobody from nowhere, landing in Cupertino, going you know begging for for a a, a meeting with um, Yahoo or somebody you know, uh, at the gates, the same as everybody else, you know, how, how do you, how do you break in, in that situation? But again, it's, it's the same thing, you know, it's about research, you know, have you built, have you built threads of a network before you get there so that you can start to use some of those connections and you're a nice guy, you know, you know, the people want to help you, you know, most people, you know, my, 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 uh, stage, quite happy to help but i mean everybody wants help so we can't help everybody so it's a question of what what is the differentiation um you know that makes you stand out of the the 20 people that are calling me sending me emails at an email uh yesterday a kid running a podcast uh somewhere uh which i haven't even looked at yet uh saying you know be be glad glad to have me on the podcast i'm going yeah i'm Fine, you know, no problem. You know, to be honest, no, no problem at the moment with it, with lockdown and, and and COVID. We've all got time on our hands to do it. But normally, when the game's on, you know, we don't have time. And uh, why? And this kid hasn't told me why. He told me, "Be honored to have me on the podcast." And I'm going, "Yeah, but who are you? What are you? What is it? What's the differentiation? What's the audience?" Da, 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 da. So he, you know, what which I'll teach him, you know, I'll, I'll go back to him, I'm a decent guy. I'll go back and say, look, frame this. What is it? You know, what is it you're doing? What, what's, what's the, what's the score here? So as I say, you know, we ran that out over, over 25 years, um, you know, players in the network question is then how, you know, you get into the networks, you know, if you're in London, you're at, you know, it's 50 people, 150 people in the room. So you're lost in the room. I'm still nobody at this point. So one, how am I going to find the gem in the room, the conversation that's going to change my life? And two, how am I going to stand out in the room? You know, so it's a question of how do you differentiate? How do you make yourself interesting in that situation? Again, you've done your research. Who's in the room? You know, get somebody to, that they're comfortable with to ghost you in, or, you know, you're, you're gone to the, the event because you know the specific person is there that you want to get to, you know, if it's Sorrel from WPP that's speaking at London Business School, you know, 30 students are around him like flies about two seconds after he's finished speaking. How do you get them out of the way? <laughs> How do you get to be the guy that has the five minute? And when you get the chance when you get your moment of glory, that you frame that in two minutes. What is it you want to say to these people uh, in the two minutes? Not blethering on about whatever. You know, the guy's going, you know, he's, he's, he's fried. He's just spoken. How can you get it into his head? There's a hook. And he goes, right, contact my PA. Here's my email address. 
let's let's set that up. Let's let's set up the meet. Lesson I learned: first, first went to the valley in in the dot com, and, and I was in the valley in eighty seven, but not really not really doing real business then. But in in the nineties, when I when I went with uh, phone me that I built, uh, I, I managed to call her a meeting with Yahoo with a big Yahoo was a big player at the time. Everybody wanted to see Yahoo, you know, purple cars outside the, the building, rock and roll, the whole bit. And I got a meeting. And uh, this was the best lesson I ever learned. And um, so I went in. And this girl came out, VP or something or other, in the, into the meeting room. She was eating an apple. She laid back in, in, her, in her chair at the end of this boardroom table, put her feet in the desk, and I'm playing it straight because I'm, I'm from London. I'm, I'm doing polite chit-chat about who I am, what I am, how it's very pleasant to meet her, da-da-da, usual bullshit. And um, she said to me, she took the apple out of her mouth, and she looked at me, and she said, what is it you want? <laughs> And that was the lesson. Different in the valley. Spit it out. First ten minutes. What is it you want? And they'll tell you. That's the great thing about America. This can-do attitude. Yes, no. At least you know where you stand. London's different. London's different. London's polite chat. Polite no's. As in, they never say no. You know, but they never say yes. So you're wandering about, wondering, did they say yes or did they say no? It's a different, it's a different thing. So that was the thing in the valley. That's the cultural difference. You know, spit it out. What is it? Time is money. Up in Sand Hill Row. Do you want the money? Let's go. Let's go. Get on. That was, you know, and, and I never, I never forgot it and uh, learned exactly. Bang it out. Same in Hong Kong, actually. Same in Hong Kong. Uh, in, in in the nineties when I was living in Hong Kong, exactly the same style, which actually suits me. Aggressive, competitive, motoring, and which is why they succeed. You know, fail fast, fast iteration, massive volume turnover, um, super aggressive market uh, compared compared to UK, London. Now, twenty years later. Is is getting there? It's slightly, slightly more aggressive, slightly more uh, momentum, and slightly more like the valley. Um, but in saying that, still dealing with enterprises and so on. It's still not. Uh, uh, it's still not as aggressive as that, or, or as free moving as that. There's there's still rules and politeness, and um, and I can drive you mad at, at, at certain points. But anyway, you know. We go through that process. Then I come out the other end 10 years ago and I stopped building and um, time on my hands. So using the, the wild Irish guy brand, which everybody began to know me of, everybody assuming that I'm standing 24 seven with a pint of Guinness in my hands, now, which I'm not. I can assure you I'd be dead if I did. Um, I have done at certain points, but not all the time. And using that Irishness, I set up my own club at Trafalgar Square in a hotel group uh, there. And re really nothing formal. It was just, it was a space, 24-7 lounge that a friend had in this big hotel, beautiful bar, restaurant, the whole thing. Anyway, took advantage of that and then began to draw people to me. So in a sense, my network, um, that was about... I say ten years ago, so that would have been about uh, two seven, something like that. Maybe maybe thirteen years ago. Actually, time moves on. Anyway, um, and then just talk. People came to me, talked, and uh, gradually built out of that. And then somebody said to me one day, "You know, there's no Irish network, business network in this town in London." Uh, Connor Foley, who built World Spreads, in a, in a bar, no doubt, at some point. I said, well, this guy's crazy. And of course there is. There must be. There's Irish everything in this in London. But he was right. There wasn't something that actually transacted business on behalf of the Irish diaspora. So we set up the Irish International Business Network as a formal thing at Deutsche Bank and 
Galliard Homes and Doyle Hotel Collection and a few others to put some money up. And then uh, drew people together and we eventually launched that in New York and also back in Dublin uh, and in Belfast, because I'm from the north as well. And, and that was a power play of a couple of thousand people in a network, really bringing 150 people together in a formal setting, obviously, often using Deutsche Bank's beautiful building in, in London and, you know, hospitality, the usual and then bringing speakers in who were uh, unusual speakers, not all tech, big business people, but rather than just come in, leave in the Mercedes, they would actually stay and engage with the audience and give access. But it was all done under Chatham House rules. So there was no media coverage. So they could let their hair down. You know, perfect example of that, we had Mike Lynch when he sold our autonomy to uh, Hewlett Packard. Um, was a great night because he could tell the story of the negotiation with HP and you know the rest is history, obviously, in terms of the fallout uh, between those two companies. But he was able to tell a bit more down and dirty the story of, of what was going on and the insight into that. And then Mike stayed and drank with people and all the young people and, and so on got to uh, got to talk to him, got got to really have a conversation with this guy or Smurf at the billionaire would turn up or Willie Walsh ran British Airways would turn up and so on. So it was very engaging, um, sort of a lesson maybe in terms of network. The Irish are very good at that. What we're very good at is, is the engagement, is the warmth, uh, is putting people at their ease. Um, and in the end, the Southern Irish particularly, very good on their feet in, in, in terms of the deal making uh, and riffing off the back of that, which is why, you know, there's 80 million in the diaspora uh, of Ireland worldwide. There's only four and a half million population in Ireland, you know, so it's, it's, it's that reach through, through the network that makes a tiny con- country. I mean, there's only one and a half million in, in Northern Ireland, but it has a greater reach because of its network than, than it does and uh, you know, Russia is obviously a bigger place, but again, you know, the network outside the country sometimes can be stronger than what's actually within the country at that point. But that was a formal network that's still going. IIBN.com. If you want to look it up, and they they will engage with anybody that's interested in the Irish. You don't have to be Irish. We you know eventually made it that anybody that wanted to trade with the Irish or wanted to talk to the Irish or give jobs to the Irish or whatever could engage, and we had you know future leaders programs for young people and got people jobs and people would land in London or New York or whatever for the first time, green as the grass. And uh, we would look after them. All voluntary philanthropic thing that we did, which was a great thing. Um, many, many a happy night, obviously, uh, with, with the Irish, with that. But it, it's a, an example of a formal network. And there's, there's other layers, you know, in London, Thai Indus, the Indian network, uh, the North London network, obviously, uh, you know, the, with, with the, uh, the Jewish community um, and so on is there. There's, there's, there's all there's all formal layers of of diaspora that are that are that are that are working. In saying that, if you've got uh, academic networks, I mean, there's Cass Business School, uh, there's London Business School, there's UCL, there's the da, 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 all the top universities. Um, you know, again. As I was saying, it, it's a question of how do you how do you get to the people if you're positioning yourself in those rooms, you know, the 150 students all doing their MBAs, whatever it is, trying to get to these people. You know, it's it's there's tricks. You know, I mean, these guys are getting pounded. You know, sometimes it's it's just a simple matter of knowing who and what they are. It's easier, obviously, when you're of an age. Sometimes where you can sort of move students out of the way and engage with slightly older business people, uh, slightly more weight. Um, but, you know, the old days of tricks of, you know, you can see the guy's been speaking for an hour. He's desperate for a drink, quite frankly. And you, you get, a, get a glass of red wine in your hand and ghost in and say, I'm sure, I'm sure you're keen to have this. And then just move him away from the crowd. Uh, and then you get your two minutes over the glass of wine with him. He's relieved. He's got a glass in his hand and he can stop talking to the students for a minute. And uh, you've, you've got your minute uh, to, 
to, to make your pitch as to, as to what it is. And the point is never overstay your welcome, never bite their ankles on the first pass. You know, this terrier thing of, oh, I've got, I've got the guy, I've nailed him, close him, you know, no point. Build a relationship for God's sake, you know, make the guy remember you for the next conversation, you know, come back round, make sure you see him the next time. These guys are bright. They're super bright. That's why they are who they are. They don't forget, you know, give them the milestones. This is what's changed since the last time we met. Da, 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 da. Engage. And what you're really trying to do is get them to eventually say, well, come down and have a coffee with me, rather than you saying, can I have a meeting? Can I have a meeting? Can, you know, can I, can I get into the diary? Da, 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 da. And sometimes you have to do that. In the end, you know, I'm not, I'm not bullshitting that, you know, sometimes you have to do the sales thing. And in the end, you do have to press for meetings. You have to ring eight times to send eight, eight emails, 16 emails or whatever it is. I mean, that's real life. But sometimes, you, you know, sometimes if you do the right things, uh, it will it will give for you, you know. I, I feel I'm talking too much. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, this is one of the most, you know, shortest intro I ever had. <laughs> yeah, you, you, you know, I had a question about... You asked, you, well, you, you asked an Irishman. I mean, God, you know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, you, were set, you were set up for that, really. <laughs> yeah, 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 no, yeah, no unstoppable. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You, you know, you have mentioned the clubs. You know, these traditional widespread clubs that yeah. uh, were popular in UK, uh, in particular. But what, what do you think? Why the popularity of this format has been dramatically falling down? Is it a, an organic, you know, end of this format, or is it about that technology have been changing everything in our life? And what, what do you think? If you, for, for instance, if you are asked to, to, to rebuild or to build from scratch such tradition club, from what would you start or would you decline and why? I think, I think that they, they still exist. That's the point. Yeah. I think the, the, you know, I think as we've discussed before, the system, we talk about UK, Because that's you know, that's that's where so much of the establishment system, the formality of these clubs, the home houses, the East India clubs, all those you know, back to the days of the Hudson Bay Company trading, you know, in 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 uh, Elizabethan times, Jesus, I mean they you know they haven't gone away since Elizabethan times. I mean that's how bad it is in the UK. So those things still exist, and they're born out of. You know the old Etonian, as you, as you know, the old Etonian uh, Eton. For those who don't know what I'm talking about, you know the school, public school system, private school system, as you would call it. You know the Ivy League system in, in America. These uh, alma mater type things exist. Don't don't get misled that they don't exist, that they've gone away. So the power play and the money and um, the Oxbridge thing, um, you know, Durham, Bristol University, you know, the top six uh, layer still exists. I think, I think it's less powerful than it was, but it's still very, very, very powerful. So I think they exist. So, how, I mean, so you say, well, You know, I, I don't really want to be part of it, to be honest. Ne you know, I'm the maverick entrepreneur. I don't really want to be part of it. When I get invited to it now, because a bit further down the track, but and I did get invited to it then if I needed it, and I get invited to Downing Street, you know, see the prime minister if I need it, in terms of, you know, greasing the wheels and slipstreaming power, if, if it helps. But if, you know, getting access to that again, Um, is still about the network. It, you know, somebody, you know, it's like Soho House, uh, which has been around for 30 years now. Uh, Soho House, which set up in Soho in London, uh, Greek Street. You know, you've got Soho, Soho Farmhouse out here in the Cotswolds, 40 minutes from the house here in Wiltshire, which is, you know, the grand uh, 100 acres country version of that still exists, you know, 
still 1,400 pounds sterling a year to join, you know, which most entrepreneurs shouldn't be spending money on, you know, if they're building a startup. Um, but a lot of them do. Uh, you know, there's one in, in Shoreditch now. Those sort of things can, can work, can work, but I don't think they, they're as, as valuable or as good quality as they were in the early days. But like Groucho's Club for, you know, if you're in media tech and you want to get into media, TV, the Netflix world now, um, Groucho's and Dean Street, you know, again, pay good money to join, uh, have to be invited, have to be, you know, guested in by somebody uh, expensive and then fucking expensive, you know, for drinks and food in the building, you know, because you can't, can't afford to eat a sandwich in there if you're an entrepreneur. Never, never mind anything. But in the day, 20 years ago, it could change your life. You know, you meet the head of a TV company over a drink and that, 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 that conversation could change change your trajectory in terms of what you're doing. I think that's less so now. I think the quality, you know, the dinners that are held at great shows and stuff, the quality is not as good. I'm not talking about the food. The food's still good. Um, people, you know, more spread out. Soho House is the same. Uh, quintessentially, what Simpson put together, Aaron Simpson put together 20 years ago, uh, quintessentially, which is high, supposed to be for high net worth individuals. I don't, you know, it is, but it's, but it, but it's, it's spread out in terms of the the wealth here. You know, it's the same as all networks. All networks in the end have the maturity curve, the same, same as businesses. You know, they, they go up a hill, they're good, but like lunch club, lunch club will go off the boil at some point, you know, we take three years. Quality is good at this point. It, it, it fans out eventually where the, every second person you're talking to will be a service company, a lawyer, professional services company. And that's what we did originally when we set our own networks up 2007, 2008 in the tech world. It's um, so to answer your question, <laughs> you know, when we set up our own networks, you know, we cleaned everybody out. that wasn't peer to peer, you know, so the, the three C's, the finding, the founders of the tech companies, uh, when we did drink, Drink Tank, uh, which McLaughlin from Huddle, uh, who's now with Jeff Clavier, the VC in, in California, uh, his, his team. We did the early web missions to, to California together. And we said, look, bullshit, these networks, every, every person we're talking to is trying to take money off us uh, every second conversation. We need to do something. So we created, and he created, actually more than me, Drink Tank, because they just got funded. And what we did was we cleared everybody out of the room that wasn't a, you know, a founder or a C group, C suite, and then left one service company or VC in the room to pay the bar bill, basically, you know, and, and pay for the food. And, and then you clean that out and then you get an exchange of ideas between people, which is then valuable. So that couple of hours, you know, once every couple of weeks or once every four weeks is then is then uh, focused and you, and you get momentum off that. And then eventually it goes off the boil. You know, if you've got a product tank now, it's not, you know, it's not what it was, you know, five years ago, seven years ago, whatever. So then I mean, they all, they all, they all fan out. So if you're, if you're setting up, I mean, I mean, the batteries, you know, if we look at Michael Birch's battery in, in San Francisco, which is, which is the high end of the game in terms of the network with a beautiful private club machine to make money, you know, um, is there a value in joining it? Should you be able to join it as an entrepreneur? No, I think, you know, I, I think you shouldn't be looking at that. You should be looking to be guested into that for free by somebody that's bringing you into the environment where you might, might, pick off a few people to talk to and, and, and start to build your network. But I, I think that for the money that you know, they want at that early stage, it's wrong. When you've, you know, when, past the A and B rounds, when you're motoring, yes, maybe, maybe you could justify that as part of your, your marketing budget. And undoubtedly, I would think at those early stages, 
we're talking about half a dozen years now for for the battery club uh the quality will probably be still still be good the thing is you what you've got to understand is that you know what, whatever it is we go back to london whatever, whatever brand is on it or whatever person's face is leading the charge in terms of whatever it is they're selling you know they're they're looking for money out of the network or they're looking for fees off the back of the people that come to the network so that's that's what they're looking for so you're in, you know it's a trade off uh there for me i mean the beauty of the irish network was it was philanthropic there was no money involved i think it was 140 pounds to join a year i think you need to charge something to commit people but you don't need to charge a lot and then you get the sponsors to put the money up which is what we did which is you know if i was doing it again exactly what i would do um and 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 you keep the quality up uh and you filter you know you moderate and filter people out you know if if there's arseholes in it um you get rid of them you know you you, 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 know, you don't, don't screw around you know you 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 know if something's not right you change it you move it you adjust you adapt um and you you know over time i mean it's been say 10 or 12 years since that's been going i mean it can you know you get that initial burst for five or six years i mean keeping the energy up for these things is the important thing and of course the founders of you know like me i'm I'm not on the board anymore i'm 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 gone six years from it now uh you know that that energy you've different people on the board different people running it so it's how how you keep the energy uh, and drive up in in the changing market i think the the, the markets the markets changed london's changed the valley's changed the valley hasn't changed as much london's caught up so the shortage thing um a lot of the formal stuff that government did in london tech city this imaginary tech city bullshit quite frankly uh you know for their own pr um formalized all of the stuff the accelerators formalized everything um everything became a formula a b c d this is what you're supposed to do with a startup this is how you do it to me um and you know I'm, I'm biased the informality the emotion uh the passion i think has to be there in this startup world to get to get anything done i think this more corporate thing um or vc led thing uh, who, you know, who don't know how to build a company, candidly. I mean, don't ever let them build your company. Um, is, is misleading for young people. They think, well, this is what you do. This is what you do. This is what you do. This is what the, this is what the PowerPoint, this is what the slide deck has to look like. You know, it's all, all rules. I think you can learn, but you have to be yourself. There has to be differentiation. There's thousands of people trying to do it. You know, how do you stand out from the crowd? And, you know, when you pitch, you know, when you, you're slipstreaming Microsoft and they invite you to Brussels to pitch at their innovation centre, uh, you know, in Brussels and wine and dine you, you know, with the other 150 companies. Well, there was 42,000 companies, would you believe, in Microsoft BizSpark when I was in it. We were in the first five standing beside Bulmer. Why were we the five standing beside Bulmer? We give a shit about the other 42,000. I can assure you that, you know, that's a numbers game. But how do you do that? How, how do you differentiate? And the answer is the network. It's the network. Somebody, somebody somewhere is shooing you in, you know, going, get putting your name on the list in the inner meeting because they've remembered the conversation. And it, quite frankly, it's to make them look good. It's not to make you look good. It's to make them look good. So it's key objectives. What are you know, as I was saying about research, what are, what, are, what are their key objectives that you can help them with their key objectives and then you position yourself alongside that, uh, which, which then makes, you know, it's a win-win. Everybody, everybody's happy. They get the PR, you know, Ballmer gets his photograph in the Daily Telegraph. I just happen to be in the photograph. Everybody wins. Yeah, got it.
I have a small question, if you don't mind. Uh, of course. Uh, yep. Uh, it, you have very interesting experience, and in terms of uh, you know uh, emotional bonds and uh, you know emotional networking, I believe is very important for people in terms even uh, going fundraising or building a startup. What you can advise for a early stage startup? Should he be focused on uh, she or he focused on uh, formal networking, like uh, trying to outreach uh, VC or angels or, you know, advisors or making more informal networking, joining uh, different clubs or uh, communities just to increase, you know, the impact on other people in this term. Uh, what you can advise for early stage startup? Uh, what's better for him? Well, the, 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 the easier thing to do is, is get to your peer group you know, the, the thing I used to say to people, my sales teams, or my VP of sales, the young guys that used to work for me, work with me, was remember all these companies you're trying to sell to, it's a revolving door. As, you, as, as you're going in, a startup's coming out. Now, he might have won the deal. It might, doesn't have to be in your market. doesn't have to be in... AI or, you know, fintech, doesn't matter what they're selling. There's a list of these enterprises. Everybody's going to the same people, right? Because we're all trying to get to the same people. Go to the peer group who've been doing it for five years and say over a drink, in the bar, over lunch, something, wherever, wherever they're meeting, you know. You talk to these guys and... Um, They'd be glad to tell you the story. They're probably desperate to tell somebody the story of the shit they've been taking for the last for the last three years with their startup. You know, and they'd be going, "Oh yeah, that bastard at Time Warner, Christ, you know what what a ball breaker he is." You know, he'll and and he'll tell you never does a deal. Ne you know, he'll talk you to death for three years. Never, never, never signs a deal. Just saved you three years. You know. Yeah. You know that's the point. So it's the, the peer group is 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 the way, um, which is kind of informal in a sense. I mean, you know, it can be in clubs, you know, whatever, you know, little innovation center, accelerator, whatever, whatever serviced office they're hanging out at. You know, you get you get in there and and um, you know buy them a coffee, buy them a sandwich because they're starving the same as you are, most of them, <coughs> and get liked. Basically, you know, so yes, informal. And it's it's creating those conversations and, you know, it's it, and also, you know, it's, it's a classic thing of, it's, it's on everybody forum. I, I, you know, I, do, I, I am distressed at certain points re reading the Facebook forums and startup things. Same questions, you know, every time, you know, how do I set up a company? What do I do about this? What do I do about this? How do I get a developer? And I'm thinking, you know, I don't give out, you know, if you're asking questions on a forum, I don't give out much hope for you, to be honest. You know, I, I really am going, God help us. You know, if you don't know this, you're, you're going to struggle. But, you know, ask, it's the thing. And then people come, come to me and go, can we have a coffee? I'm going, No. You know, what is it, you know, back to Yahoo, what is it you want? You know, frame something. You know, it's the same with, same with your peer group. You know, they can have a beer and a coffee with, with 50 people, you know, especially if they're, you know, what, one of the named peer group who are doing well. You know, they're, they're, they're running Starling Bank or they're, they're you know, they're, they're running TransferWise or they're running Stripe or something. And you want, you want to get to one of the Collison boys over a beer or something. You know, they can have 50 coffees a day, I'm sure, with, with people. It's, you know, maybe maybe that's another lesson, maybe not to go for the names. There's plenty of people. I'm not a name, for God's sake, really, you know, over, over the years. I, I used to be a name 20 years ago. I'm not a bloody name any, anymore, really. You know, there are people second string who would be easier to get to easier to have a coffee with, easier to have a beer with, 
Um, that, that's that's the other thing. It doesn't have to be uh, Jason Kilcanis, you know, and and catching people at the right time, which comes to mind. You know, it's the same as when you hire your, you know, I wouldn't suggest you do hire a PR agency, but in my day, you did hire PR agencies 20 years ago. You don't want to hire P- established PR agencies. You can't bloody afford established PR. You want to get the bright kid who's just started the PR company that's going to be the next great PR company. And you go up the hill with them at the same time. They're winning because you're fantastic as a client and you're winning because they're not charging you a lot because they're trying to, trying to make their name in, in terms of that. So it's a, you know, it's a trade-off in terms of who you t- – timing is everything. Really, in, you know, slipstream and timing. Uh, you know, same with the networks. You know, if they're going off the boil, it's too late. You know, fintech networks in level thirty-nine. I'm thinking of great at the beginning. Um, Van de Clay that ran that out of uh, Canary Wharf. Fantastic, buzzy, lots happening. Da da da. Level thirty-nine now. Waste of time. You know, waste of money. You know. It's 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 that uh, framing framing and understanding that, but your peer peer group will tell you that, you know you yeah. you, you, know, you see me for a bear, I go, you say da, 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 what about X, and I'll go yeah don't bother with that, you know that's what I do these days I advise emerging technology companies on the network, that's you know my, my day job in a sense, you know when I'm working more closely with the emerging startup, it's about how do they navigate the jigsaw that is London. Uh, and the network, and how do we accelerate access to that first enterprise deal, that first joint venture? You know, how do we get there faster without making mistakes? And how do they get to maximize their opportunity when they do get their five minutes of fame in front of the person that I'm trying to get them to at that point? Um, it's, it's yeah. you know, that's it's just, I mean, the whole thing's a game. You know, this is, this is the thing. It's also good not to take it too seriously, to be honest. You know, it's a long game as well, as I'm proving after 40 years. You know, it, it really isn't, um, you know, people get stressed, uh, the pressure, da, 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 tears, blood, the rest of it. And, you know, it can be vicious as well. I mean, the valley is vicious. It is all about money. You know, these, these people are all about money. As we just seen with this European football uh, nonsense, do they give a shit about the fans? Of course they don't give a shit about the fans. They've never given a shit about the fans. You know, the whole thing is about money. Um, and and uh, they've, they've fallen on their, on their faces because of their arrogance, because they thought, we don't, we don't need to consult the fans. Well, they, they made a mistake on this point. Mostly they don't. Normally they've got the power to do whatever they want to do in terms of the money. So it, it is about money. Um, there's a veneer of... Um, Civil civilization ab- about it, civilized nature about all this. Uh, but when you get down to the hard tax, uh, the, the final, the final, last mile, as they say, it's it's about you or them in terms of the money that's on the table. Unfortunately, yeah. you know, that's just me being cynical after forty years. Of course, what what would I know? Yeah, yeah, I get it. So, uh, and what do you think? Um, it's easy to build informal relationships inside of your local community, for example, Russian community, and it's hard to reach at some point the international community and build um, the formal, you know, emotional bond with uh, international community, like you said, for example, Japan. What do you think? Is yeah. it important to start from the scratch uh, trying to build your international network? Or you can uh, easily, you know, use your local community as a start to, you know, start international business or startup. Well, it's a lot easier now. I mean, uh, I'm old enough to remember before the internet. <laughs> you know, if you if you if you if you want if you wanted information on a product, God help us, you know, in the eighties from California. You had to wait six weeks for it to come in the post in a brochure. That's how bad it was, right? So, you know, think yourself lucky. Uh, we've got this, look, you know, here I am talking to Russia. It's easy. It's easy. So the, an- the answer is yes. You, you build, as I said at the beginning of this, 
you build your network out early. So yes, if you, you think, oh, I'm not going international yet, I'm not going to London yet, not going to California, not going to Boston, Japan, Tokyo yet, but I think I might be in two years' time, then you, you build now is, is the answer. There's only so many hours in the day, so you have to prioritize. Um, you know, the old PODC management mantra, you know, prioritization, organization, direction, and control, uh, which is my watchword in terms of running businesses. Um, you know, ABC, you know, in tray exercise, ABC and C never gets done, goes in the bin, basically, in terms of your priorities. But uh, yes, you know, it's, it's about the plan. And yes, you, you try and, you know, if you're going to go to California, you know, find some champions in, in California. Brings me back to every investor I've ever talked to who are trying to blow me off in terms of, you know, I'm not going to give you the money. They always ask, well, who do you think you'll be bought by, Damon? Who do you think you'll be bought by, Damon? I've got into the thing, you know, it's going to be Microsoft, it's going to be Google, it's going to be Siebel, it's going to be Oracle, it's going to be Salesforce. No, what I've learned is it's a no-name company that you've never heard of, you know, from Wisconsin or Miami or somewhere who control their market, who are massive, who you've never heard of. You know, the Russians, Access Industries, there's a perfect name uh, to play with. You know, who the hell has ever heard of Access Industries? Uh, you know, Len and, and his merry men. You know, so that's, you want to build. I was great at indirect sales. You know, if you go to America with, get a team of 30 people, you're taking six to California with you. You're leaving the balance in, in UK to run the business. Uh, your C team staying staying in uh, UK. You're off with, with the new team to Mountain View, wherever it is. You're not gonna you're not gonna conquer America direct. You know, even if you got five million dollars, ten million dollars, even uh, my debt was five million dollars in A round. Uh, the cost would kill you. So you have to have partnerships, so joint venture, indirect partnerships. And it was that's what you know. That's what, day one for me. It's about exit. So how do you build the people relationship with the people that are going to buy you? across America and Canada, and now in the Far East, obviously, the market's changed. America, not so much of a target as it was. But in those days, how can you cover America uh, with indirect partnerships, channel, um, and how do you manage that channel? Uh, and how do you hang on to any money when you manage that channel? Uh, but again, that's about network. So it's a, that's, a, that's, a, that's a formal network. Those could be signed, partnership, distribution, reseller, VAR, SAR, agreements, SLAs. So that's a network. That's, that's a formal network, another, another layer of network. And the answer is there's no reason you can't sign those or begin to sign those <clears throat> or begin to have those conversations uh, before you get there. In saying that with America, the watchword with America was you could have great conversation. You could fly into Cupertino have great meetings with the Americans. They're as bad as me, talk you, talk you to death, the Americans. And they say, great, wonderful, you're a fantastic person, wonderful product, da, 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 da. end of the day. When you're here, we'll do business. So if you actually weren't committed to the market, they wouldn't. I think that's gone off a bit now with, and now obviously even more so with, uh, with the Zoom world that we're in. And obviously they're now investing outside uh, the valley uh, online, but I think there's still a bit of that. You know, if you're not committed to Japan, they're not going to do business with you. You're not physically there, and so on. But it doesn't mean to say you can't have tentative conversations around that and and create the building blocks before you actually get there. Yeah, I got it. Thank you for the answer. Uh, I think no problem. we uh, no problem. run out run out of time. Uh, if you Good. have any a few minutes the last, the last I'm, question. I'm sure okay. they've heard enough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, maybe somebody no from our group has a question uh, to our guest. Is, yeah. there, is, there, is there many out there? We're not, like I'm not talking to myself, hopefully. <laughs> For sure. 
you're tap you're tapping this. This is um, you've got a copy of this, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. for sure. Yeah, yeah, usually, yeah, uh, usually it uh, collects thousands of views. Therefore, I think you will be very popular in Russian network. <laughs> well, we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. Maybe some of them would like to speak. Speak it direct. Speak it directly to, to to the Russian network. I mean, you're the main thing for for you with London is creating comfort. You know that that's that's what it that's what it is. You know, in terms of doing business, you know, from you know cities in Russia that I've never heard of. Mm-hmm. It's it's who are the, who are you? What are you? Should yeah. I be talking to you? It's that comfort factor, uh, which you know you're way down the track, Evgeny. In terms of what you're doing, you've done that, broken the back of it. But I think you had to come here physically to do that. So that's you know there's the barrier, obviously not being able to travel at the moment. How do you create that comfort factor? But I think it's it's that um, credibility and resonance and collateral and so on that will will get people to engage um, from in a sense of what is a cold conversation to start with but obviously the intro the referral pretty obvious you know that in, in terms of breaking that breaking those barriers down anyway enough enough <laughs> okay yeah as a takeaway from this conversation correct me if I'm wrong but um... The main, the cornerstone of every network. It doesn't matter where it is, which local communities. Would you buy the network when you, you know, buy the access to these private clubs? But it's all about one very simple approach. Yeah, jab, 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 hook. Yeah, give, 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 ask. Yeah, it's it, it doesn't matter who you are. Of course, if you're trying to uh, get, a, let's grab a coffee after 12 seconds of the conversation, it doesn't make any sense. Yeah, as you have highlighted a lot of times. Sure. But that's only about one simple approach. You should give, 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 deliver, 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 and then ask. Yeah, I think I think you know that's that was all that was always my thing or some resonance with them that makes makes them give you give you the time you know that oh you know you've been introduced comfort uh you've done your research comfort your real comfort and then and then and then they and they they relax and they open up but yeah you know you know but i think you don't have to do that for me. I mean, people on these lunch club things, you know, it, you know, they, they listen to me as you know, as you know how bad it is, trying to get a word in edgeways for forty-five minutes with me on lunch club. But at the, the end of it is, they go, they say formally to me, "Oh, what is it I can do for you?" Well, that's not the way to do it. You know, that's yeah, that's bullshit. You know, it's it's them recognizing through their research, the pre. The meeting, and then picking some gems out of the conversation, they then respond. Perhaps later, with something you know, it might be content, might be another contact, might be whatever, whatever the hell it is. Uh, but they're clever about it, you know, in in terms of because because you know it's it's, it's classic guys on a panel at a conference, you'll get you know, 40 emails afterwards saying, I want, did it, did it, did it. But the, the email that catches attention will be the one where, where there's something that resonates and goes, click, oh, I get that. I, I will respond to that. You know, that's, that's where it's at. So yeah, you're right. You're right. But, it, it's, but it's, it's how it's done. It's not yeah. what it is. It's, it's how it's done. Yeah, sure. Uh, and what are you doing now? What is your focus now? How maybe our, our community could be useful for you? <laughs> Sorry for that maybe common question. <laughs> <laughs> Classic. Uh, yeah. No, it's well, not nothing. Nothing. Nothing really. I mean, I'm, I'm these days. I'm. I'm not looking. And I think that's also a good stance. It's a bit like a reverse sale that. You know, I'm an old, I'm an old dog in, in terms of the tricks. 
you know, it's about like I'm still using the silent close from from 1982. To be honest, and it still works because <laughs> no, nobody nobody sees it anymore. Uh, you know, and so on. It is it, a reverse sale. It it is about not a, not appearing desperate. I do advise emerging technology companies. I do get paid to advise emerging technology companies. Uh, not a great deal because uh, it's all a balance with, with what emerging technology companies can afford, but enough to commit them to me. Uh, and I do it on a risk-free basis, basically, uh, on a 30-day basis so that they don't feel as if, if they're, they're tied to a major contract or whatever. And when I, when I focus, all I look for in those companies is they commit. You know, so, so many people look as if they want advice or look as if they want to do this stuff, but actually, you know, they talk the talk, but they don't walk the walk. And, and the answer is, you know, for all the bullshit and all the PR and all the marketing, it's hard work is the answer. You know, you, you gotta, gotta get down and dirty and get on with the work. So they work with me and it's a question of, you know, grinding it out to some extent, keeping the pressure up on, on the targets and the market to get things to happen. So that's, that's, that's what I do. So, that, you know, if there's companies that are, are looking, you know, are already here uh, or beginning to get success, success is running away with them. So they don't know how to scale, don't understand how to control the business. Uh, that's one area or, or they've stole, they tried and they've stalled and they're beginning to run, run out of money, uh, you know, having had a first wave and they've stalled and uh, they're at risk, you know, need to retarget or regroup and make the push again or, or change direction and so on, then I'm, that's, that's what I do. You know, I, and, you know, as a senator, you've got, I'm not dead yet. I still like cutting a deal. Yeah. yeah, you know, yeah. It's still, it still amuses me to take the big vendors out and shoot them in the head, uh, to be honest. Yeah. You know, at, at least I owe you a Guinness when I am in London. Definitely, definitely. definitely. Loads of Guinness, loads of Guinness. Absolutely. <laughs> Fantastic. Good. Anyway, great to talk, guys. En enjoyed it. Loved everybody. Yeah, uh, yeah out appreciate there. it. And, Thank you for you know, the no, 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 no problem. Always happy, always happy to talk. Yeah. And it's been lo lovely to get to know everybody uh, over, over there. Thank you very much. That was a very useful conversation for us, you know, proving our approach, which is really like a very similar to your. And uh, that was very nice to understand your experience. It was very useful for us. Thank you very much. No problem. Good, good luck in San Francisco. Yep. Yeah. Th yep. Thank you, mate. Yeah. Have a great day. Yeah. Well. Thanks. Bye-bye.